If there is no question, we can move on to lesson one. Okay, introduction and the review. Uh, I divide lesson one into three sections. First, introduction to ultrafast optics. Parenthesis 1.1 means this part is related to section 1.1 of the textbook. So you can easily find uh, the corresponding materials if you have a textbook. Okay. In the second part, I will review the electromagnetism, continuous wave lasers, Fourier transform, and they are uh, covered in 1.2, 1.3, and 1.5 uh, in the textbook. And finally, the pulse formation via more locking is covered in 1.4 of the textbook. Okay. So this is the uh, standard format of my lecture slides. Uh, so it's the first time, so I show you what are the meanings. Okay, section 1-1, one -one, introduction to ultrafast optics. And the list section is further divided into three parts. I will show you the definitions of uh, key parameters uh, that are usually used in the community of ultrafast optics. Then you will know what do the terms mean when you speak to other uh, people. Uh, you can know with each other. The time scales and uh, the shortest poses people can generate to date. Okay. And uh, some selected applications of ultrafast optics. Okay. So what is ultrafast optics? Uh, it's an interesting question. Because the speed of light in vacuum is a constant. C equals square root of mu zero times epsilon zero, as you know. And you know the constant is about three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Okay, everyone knows this formula. If the speed is a constant, why, uh, why can the light be ultra fast? It's a very interesting question, right? And actually, the ultrafast is defined by the duration of physical event. For example, uh, the laser pulse is a physical event uh, in our case. So it's about the laser pulse duration. Okay? The ultrafast is not about the propagation speed. No matter the laser pulse is short or broad, they propagate at the same speed. Okay? But if a pulse is very short, we call it fast. Uh, if it's a broad pulse, it's slow. Okay? That's why you have this term. And the ultrafast optics uh, usually covers the generation the measurement, the propagation, and the applications of ultra-short optical pulses. Okay? But this is a qualitative term. Precisely speaking, ultra-short means the pulse duration is in this order, 10 to the minus 12th to 10 to the minus 15th second. Okay? Within this range, uh, we say the laser pulses are ultra-short pulses, and it belongs to ultrafast optics. Okay. Okay. Some definitions about uh, la uh, short laser pulses. In fact, a real light source produces a periodic pulse train instead of a single pulse. Okay. So if you buy a ultrafast laser, you turn it on, you cannot get a single shot. You got a periodic pulse train, okay? just like this. This is a time axis. Okay? The vertical axis means uh, laser power. So you can see periodic pulses. Every 
TR, you got a pulse, and for a single pulse, the duration is delta T. Okay. So delta T is named the pulse width. Okay. And usually we use FWHM. It's the acronym of full width at health maxima. Okay. That means this is maxima, right? This is 50% of the maxima. If you use a horizontal level cut here, you got the full width, and this is FWHM. Usually, we define it as pulse duration. Of course, there are other definitions, but it's a very intuitive uh, definition. So in the future, if you see the symbol delta T in my slides, you know it's pulse width and defined by FWHM. Okay. How about TR? Okay. TR has a term, repetition period, uh, you can easily identify the meaning. For every TR, you got the pulse, okay. repeatedly. Okay. And the starting from delta T and the TR, you have other parameters, for example, you can usually hear, uh, hear the term repetition rate. What is repetition rate? It's just the inverse of repetition period, okay, 1 over TR. Now,你现在已经知道TR的意思是每TR的时间会打出一发脉冲,那把它取得导数代表什么?每秒打出多少发? Okay, so it's called repetition rate or chongfulu. Okay. Also, you can uh, define another term, duty cycle, big D, which is delta T over TR. Okay, delta T is here, TR is here. Okay, you can easily know uh, the duty cycle, big D, is always less than 1 because delta T is always less than TR. Okay, so what does this mean? It means, uh, roughly speaking, the percentage of time in which there is uh, laser energy. Okay, so 大致上来说, 这个数字就告诉你, uh, laser power. 其他的时间是暗的, power. Okay. The smaller the duty cycle, the uh, smaller percentage that you can harvest energy. Okay. Any question? No? Good. But be careful. This figure might not be so precise. Okay? If, we, uh, if you look at a single pulse, actually you know laser pulses are uh, nothing but uh, electromagnetic fields, right? So what is the corresponding elect uh, electric field of a single pulse? It could be like this, okay? The blue curve shows the electric field actually oscillates, okay? And the profile might be like this, but in reality, electric field can be positive, negative, positive, negative, okay? Power is always positive, but field can be positive or negative. So this is the uh, real case. The electric field actually oscillates very fast. And if you select the spacing between two valleys or spacing between two peaks, same thing, you got a term TC, which is usually referred as the carrier cycle. Okay. Uh, so it uh, you can imagine TC can be even smaller than the post duration delta T. Okay. And uh, from TC you can calculate other parameters such as the carrier frequency, which is 1 over Tc, okay? And uh, by the physical formula of light speed you have known well before, you know the carrier frequency K 
can also be calculated by light speed in vacuum over the wavelength, right? Speed is frequency times wavelength, right? You know this formula uh, in general physics or maybe in the middle school, you know the formula, okay? 好, 所以这个就告诉我们, 波长相关, 然后又跟这个载波周期有导数关系, okay. And you can uh, also calculate uh, the wavelength of the light spin wave over 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 the wavelength of the light Carrier cycles beneath. Ah, this spread up to how many wavelength periods? Ah, this is called number of cycles. NC. Okay. So with this single page, uh, I have shown you uh, most of the temporal param uh, parameters about pulse train. Okay, you know the pulse width, delta T, repetition period TR. Repetition rate, FR, duty cycle, big D, uh, carrier cycle, TC, carrier frequency, FC, and the number of cycles, NC. Okay. Okay. So in the future, I will use the same set of symbols uh, to represent the uh, physical parameters. Any question? Good. But in addition to temporal parameters, there are power-related parameters for a uh, pulse train. For example, pulse energy. What is pulse energy? U. So I use this figure. This is power axis. This is time axis. For each pulse, you got an uh, envelope. And uh, the area of a single envelope means pulse energy. Is it OK? Because power means energy per unit time, right? If you integrate power with respect to time, what do you get? Energy, right? Oh, 功率是单位时间的能量, 所以你把功率对时间积分就是算面积嘛, 你得到什么?就是一发脉冲的能量, right? And I use the symbol big U to represent pulse energy. And you can see pulse energy is dependent on the pulse shape. Okay? We haven't talked about how to measure the pulse shape, but for the sake of simplicity, you can calculate pulse energy by this simple formula. Average power times repetition period. What is average power? Okay, here. This is peak power, right? Peak power can be much larger than the average power. Uh, so your average power times repetition period, so roughly speaking, it means the area under this rectangle. And uh, this rectangle has the same area as the area under the blue curve. In that case, your pulse energy can be easily calculated by the product of uh, average power and the repetition period. Okay. The other is peak power, just like this figure. Uh, this position is the peak power. You can calculate peak power by U over delta T. U is the area. Delta T is the average width. So the ratio is about the average height. So that's why, in principle, u over delta t is close to peak power. But as I mentioned, it's about the pulse shape, so we need an adjustment factor, small a, depending on the shape. For example, if the curve is a Gaussian function, then small a is 0 0.94, you can prove by yourself, which is very close to 1, right? So that means 
if it is Gaussian, either you use 0 0.94 or use 1, it's uh, not, not a big difference. Okay. But if your shape is very strange, maybe this small a is uh, no longer close to 1. Okay. So sometimes you need the adjustment factor. And uh, you can start with this formula, and uh, using this formula again, you can get this new relation. The peak power is the average power times an amplification factor, which is A over big D. A is this one, adjustment factor. If it's Gaussian, it's very close to 1. But what is big D? We just introduced in last page the duty cycle, right? So that means if duty cycle is smaller, you got a very large amplification factor. Your peak power will be much, much stronger than your average power if your duty cycle is very small. Uh, what is small duty cycle? Let's go back. Okay. It means for very long repetition period, you got a very short pulse then you have a very small duty cycle. In that case, your peak power can be very, very high, while your average power could be still very small. Okay. I will show you real numbers later. Okay. Then you can have a better sense. Third one is peak intensity. Okay, uh, intensity by the physical units, you know what is intensity, the power density, power per unit cross-sectional area. So if you know the peak power from here, divided by the beam cross-sectional area, okay, then you got the peak intensity, okay. And uh, this is a parameter that you have to measure by the beam shape measurement. Do you know what is the typical numbers about your beam cross-sectional area? If you work in a laser lab, you know usually the beam diameter without focusing is in the order of one or two millimeters, right? So you got millimeter square here. But if you focus your laser beam, you can make the beam diameter very, very small, maybe in the order of several microns, limited by the diffraction limit, right? It's about the order of wavelengths, so it can be uh, microns, okay? Then you have a very small beam cross-sectional area. With a very small denominator, you can have a very high peak intensity after focusing. And by the physical rule, you also know if you can calculate peak intensity, you can also calculate the corresponding peak electric field. The power density is related to the electric field. Electric field has a physical units, volt per centimeter, just like a parallel plate capacitor. Okay. The bias voltage divided by the spacing between the two conducting plates. And you can calculate field by this formula. Once you know the peak intensity, you can calculate the field. So it's about the time. Let us take a brief break of 10 minutes. <laughs>